Here we are. Um, safeguarding practices. Uh, in Article 18 uh, in the Convention, and you will find it in the Operational Directive, uh, it says it's defined as programs, projects, and activities for safeguarding the intangible cultural heritage. So the big question is, how can we, how can we safeguard some, something which is alive? I think in the 72 Convention, according to the 72 Convention, it's easy. Because then you will have, you can lock something down in a cellar, or you can take care of a monument, or a castle, or a stave church, or something like that. Uh, but for, uh, for the intangible cultural heritage, for the living heritage, it's much more difficult. And on this picture, you can see Osman Kleiv, which is a ski maker. Uh, he has been ma he's making wooden skis, as they have done in generations in Morgedal in Norway. So how do we, how do we safeguard him and his knowledge? And this is, this is a really difficult uh, question. And also, we should be aware that intangible cultural heritage, uh, it change, it change. When it goes from generation to the ge generation, it develops and it, uh, it, uh, it, it should actually change. That is something that is typical for intangible cultural heritage. Uh, you cannot lock this man into a museum cellar. You have to, you have, to have other mechanisms and uh, methodology for safeguarding uh, the intangible cultural heritage. So UNESCO has a register of good safeguarding practices formerly known as uh, the Register for Best Safeguarding Practices. But then they changed name to make it, in order to make it more uh, uh, accessible. So the, the, main, uh, the main message here is that UNESCO and the, uh, and the Entity for Living Heritage, they wanted to develop a tool, or the, the committee wanted to develop a tool for that could be for inspiration, learning, teaching, and development. Something that could help uh, to pass the intangible cultural heritage over to a new generation. And if you look at the, uh, the elements or the, uh, uh, the programs, projects, and activities that are inscribed, uh, it's, it can be a physical place, like the land of legend, for example. It can also be a methodology, like uh, the Kodali system, which is inscribed from, uh, from uh, Hungary. Or uh, it could be uh, a, like a festival or something. That are the three main uh, uh, types of inscription on the register. Um, yeah. Now we have, uh, this is uh, something uh, that I'm uh, I think is crucial. You have the, when you are doing uh, the safeguarding, you should not freeze the element. You don't, like, not like Özil. You have Özil, just for them who don't know. He was found in a, in a, or uh, uh, he was found in ice. When the ice was melting, they found him. So he was, he had been frozen down for many, many years. Uh, but it's not a way to safeguard intangible cultural heritage because intangible cultural heritage is always in humans. <coughs> it's in the practice. So it has to be alive. And you don't want to freeze it. Uh, it should develop and it should be passed on to a new generation through practice. On the other hand, there is the risk of over-commercialization or jeopardization, disnification, theatrification, or all these words that are used, decontextualization, that we are introducing safeguarding measures that is actually changing the element, which we don't want. Or we, we make it, for example, too, uh, too touristic. We say that, okay, in order to make this, in order to make this element surviving, we are, uh, for example, if, let me use an example. If um, there is gloves 
There is a knitting, beautiful gloves, as they do in Latvia. And there is a little village where they make these beautiful gloves. And they say that, well, in order to safeguard, in our safeguarding plan for these gloves, we need for it to survive, we need to introduce, uh, we need to sell more gloves. We should sell more gloves to the tourists. So we will make a shop in the center of Riga we will, where we will sell these gloves. And then, in order to meet the demand from the tourists, because we will now sell, sell 1,000 or 100 uh, a time, how, the, the, the number of gloves that we were doing before, we need to import some yarn from China uh, to, to, to meet uh, the increased uh, demand. Uh, and we also, uh, we need to buy some knitting machines because all these old ladies, they are not, po cannot possibly do this anymore. It's not possible for them to knit so many gloves. So what we are doing then is that we are actually interfering uh, with the element. Uh, and when, when you have an element, it's, it's not only the gloves, it's on, not only the knitting of the gloves even, it's the, what we, what is said in, um, uh, in, in, in uh, if you read the form, it's the, um, uh, it's, it's the social and the cultural function of the element. Uh, what, is the, what, is the, what is the function for the community? What, between generation, between people, how, how, what function does it have? In, tor, uh, in, in different, all these elements, more important than just a physical little thing, which we have a tendency to focus on, is actually the cultural and the social function of the element, which this is, I think this is really important. Um, and then it's the element, of course, we need to identify in this context, what are we actually safeguarding? Is it the boat? Is it the boat builder? Is this the culture around the boat building uh, production uh, and the identity of the community within the community? And, and this is questions which is really important. Uh, yeah, and in the convention, you know, uh, of course, this by heart, but uh, this is uh, the definition that is used in Article 2. Uh, and there are some key, um, uh, there are some, um, there are some keywords here that we need to go more deeply uh, into. Uh, and I will ask you now, this is an open question. Anyone here knows what this, numbers, what this number mean? Susanne, you probably know. I uh, it's 25. <laughs> 25. <laughs> Why do I have this number? No, nobody knows. It's just... It's the no, it's the number. If you look at the ICH2 form, <laughs> 25 is the number of times the term community is repeated in the application form, yeah. So the community, the term community is really important and it's really crucial to the convention. What is a community? I think Susanna tried to answer that yesterday. Um, but it's, it's from Latin, it comes from Latin, it's communis, uh, which means something that we share, something that we have in common. And I think that is a good way of understanding this term. It's an element that we share, that we have in common. And if you look at these people, the green woodworkers, they are sharing. There's one from India, there is uh, one from Birmingham, and there is a man from Edale, and they are sharing, uh, they are all green woodworkers and they are sharing, they are part of the same green woodworking community, I would say. So it doesn't have to be limited by a physical space. Uh, it can also be wider than that. Uh, and then I would like to, uh, ah, this is from the sauna. I, I took this picture yesterday. Um, yeah, what are the social and the cultural function of the element? Because it's we, we have a tendency to decontextualize uh, the element. We look to uh, and focus too much and to simplify it and to reduce the element uh, and not see the whole context. And that is very important when we are later today are working in, when we are working in the workshops, 
uh, and we are going to look more into how we should uh, how we should understand or how we should prepare for inscription. I think this is really important uh, important part of it to 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 go into. What are the social and the cultural function of the element? Like uh, yesterday, there was somebody told me about the fishing uh, tradition uh, in a small valley, a river between uh, Sweden and, and uh, Finland. And I think that is, it's not a fish, and it's not a fishing, but it's all the whole thing around, around that, all the implications and, and the complexity uh, in the element. Yeah, uh, in, in Oselvar Verkstaden, which I think is a very nice example, uh, they have, they have um, this is, is a good safeguarding practices. It was actually inscribed as the best safeguarding practices before it changed now, name, but now it's, it's a good safeguarding on the safe, uh, um, the, the, uh, yeah, best, no, good safeguarding practices. Uh, and they have different way of interaction uh, with the community. Uh, there is every four graders in this area, they are introduced to sailing and they are introduced to the workshop, and this happens once a year. Uh, and all fourth graders in this area are introduced to the, to the, uh, to the Oselvar. And it's a visible, you can see the place, it's in the community of Os, it's there and it's big, it's in the center, so everybody will see it, so it's very visible. Uh, the municipality are involved, the mayor are involved, he is in the lead and they are all very proud of it. Uh, they, they are having a variety of activities like regattas, open day, and they have introduction for, for uh, people into the Oselva Werkstad. And the, the weapon of the, uh, the, uh, the official weapon of the Oselva, of the uh, municipality is an Oselva. And also they involve the local and regional museums. Uh, they have a high volume of training, two apprentices per year, wooden boat builder profession every year. And boat builders from all of Norway and also from abroad, they are coming to study this wonderful example. They invite older boat builders, like old boat builders, which are not active anymore, but they are invited to something that they call the boat slaughter where they are, when there's a new boat that has been built, they are invited to give their views and ask difficult questions. And uh, they invite, they have the customers and the users of the boat. Uh, the local bank are using the Oselvar brand as, as uh, in their marketing, a picture of the uh, Oselvar. And they have a tight cooperation with NGOs. But I think it's, it's not only the, the things that are inscribed on the best or good safeguarding practices register, but because communities, individuals, and NGOs, they are safeguarding NGOs at the ICH every day. Yeah, five minutes, thank you. Uh, they are safeguarding ICH every day, all around in, in the Nordic countries and in, both, in, the, in the Baltic countries. So this is something that happens all the time. So it's not special, it doesn't have to be inscribed uh, on the list. This is from uh, something that uh, Norges Husflidslag, uh, which is um, one of the uh, accredited NGOs, accredited NGOs in Norway. They have this camp for children every year, one week, uh, where they learn to, to make a bow and arrow, they learn to shoot with bow and arrow, they are fishing and they are really get in touch with their heritage. This is, shows the popularity of the different lists, which is a sad reading, of course. It shows that um, the representative list, they have, at the time, they have 429 inscriptions from all over the world. Then the urgent safeguarding list has 59 uh, inscriptions and good safeguarding practices has only 20 inscriptions. So why is that? Uh, maybe Susanna has a good answer, but, but uh, I think maybe this uh, good safeguarding practices is, is maybe the most important of them all. 
So I think it's a bit strange. Um, so, so the number of inscri inscription on the Register of Good Safeguarding Practices from 2009 to 2018 has only been 20 inscriptions. But the Nordic Safeguarding Practices, as you know, our wonderful web page, has from 2017 to 2019, 29 inscriptions, which actually means that we beat UNESCO in that uh, if it was a competition. It's not a competition. The convention is not a competition. No, it's not. So, but, but this, I think the Nordic safeguarding practices is a wonderful example, and we decided yesterday that we should also include the Baltic uh, states uh, in, uh, in the register, and we should continue uh, to develop this web page because it's a good way of sharing experiences from the field, sharing uh, methodology, and sharing methods how we can safeguard uh, intangible cultural heritage in the best way and learn from each other. Thank you very much.